off with the colors They kinda tell me what I'm thinking I fell in love with the way we are And the way we lose it There's something different about us And the reason why we stay If the camera is shaking, it's because I am extremely nervous. <sighs> I don't even like start this conversation. You obviously know from the title of this video what I'm doing today. Um, this is what I have been saving up for. I am not done saving up for it. In fact, I'm barely, hopefully, hopefully I'm halfway there. Um, but I find out today, ultimately, how much it's going to cost and if, in fact, I can schedule this surgery. Yes, I am, I'm wanting to have surgery. This is elective. I am wanting to reduce and lift the ladies. I mean, that, that, that's the only conversation to have about it. I want them smaller and I want them lifted. I want them back up where they belong. <laughs> I show the camera a lot from here up because quite literally my chest takes up a wide berth of my body and I don't like the image of it. I don't like them at all and Jason is supportive of me doing this surgery. He wants me happy. He wants me to feel good about myself um, because if I feel good about myself, I'm going to be a happy wife. <laughs> He would be here with me today, but last minute our employee needed to go out of town on a little vacation and just he couldn't manage to work around this appointment any more than he already has for a lot of other things that we've had going on. So he won't be able to go with me, but I think he might not have even been able to go back into the room with me. He might have only been able to go into the office. So it's okay that he's not here, but I do need to get going. Um, like that's really all there is to say about this appointment. I, I just I want it done if I can't afford it Here like this consult that I have will be telling of how much the base price is for our general area here in Washington in the suburbs of Seattle if you will because we live in a wealthy area They can charge higher prices I have a family member who has had this surgery done in Utah and has reached out to her surgeon to see if his prices are better than my prices here and we will find out today if in fact his prices are better if his are better it's unfortunate because he's not scheduling until next year so while that's tempting I want to do it this year let's go and find out what my possibilities are because I don't even have mon enough money for it and I can't take from our regular income to make this happen uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, one, because I've, we, I've always said it in my mind, if I want something that's a big purchase, I need to save up for it. It's just the in, independent upbringing that I was, I don't know, I don't know why, maybe it's just me and wanting to, I used to earn the paycheck, I used to support our family uh, with a full-time job and full-time benefits. I do feel mildly guilty when I, I don't bring home a paycheck and I know that Jason doesn't ever put that pressure on me but when it's something big like this um, I feel like I need to earn it myself um, I am using my YouTube money to go into savings to pay for this so let's go I'm really nervous I'm here and I'm so dang nervous you guys I haven't been this nervous for a doctor appointment or for anything in a long time let's go see what this is about I'm so nervous so I've watched a little educational video and now I'm waiting for a consult room and uh, start the actual like consult and I'm so nervous I think I'm more nervous about finding out the cost I think that's what I'm most nervous about because my chest has been touched and examined so many times I'm not worried about that besides it um, a little bit but not like that I'm just really nervous that I'm not actually going to be able to afford it right now. is 
um, so full of information and um, what an experience that was first of all the doctor that I um, picked I don't know anything about him I just kind of picked based on reviews and um, the side company that he works through um, that I trust I could not have picked a better doctor when and if I am able to do this surgery I I totally have. I've never, it's been a really long time aside from my OBs that I've had that good of um, bedside manner with the doctor and openness and, um, but also like compassion and understanding. I technically, let me, let me just dive in a little bit. I'm also starving. <laughs> it's almost noon. I haven't eaten yet. Okay, let me give you a little basic rundown of um, the appointment because obviously like I can't bring the camera with me and I actually let him know that I am that I am a youtuber and I am documenting my journey him and the and the assistant literally start crying because they were so blown away by my willingness to um, put myself out there and be vulnerable like this um, and to help other women that might want to do this um, I also have to get a mammogram and he thought it was great that I filmed that too <laughs> Obviously not the entire procedure. <laughs> but in general, uh, watch the cute little video. And then I met with him and we had an amazing consult to begin with, um, fully clothed. We just talked about what I want, what I'm interested in, what he's capable of doing and what types of surgeries there are. <laughs> we talked a lot about like the expectations of what would happen from a reduction versus a lift or combination of, of such. Um, and he talked about like the little flabby that's usually under your armpit um, that women tend to not like and he can't do that part of the surgery with a breast reduction and, and breast lift and he's like I just don't want you to have like that expectation that that would be taken care of and, and eliminated because he can't access it when I'm laying flat on my back during a five-hour surgery he said I, he will go in there with a little liposuction um, stick and get as far in there and get some of that fatty tissue out as possible. But what surprised me was that he thinks I don't actually need as much of a reduction as I thought I did. He thinks that the healthy tissue is just in the wrong place. And if we get it into the right place, I'm actually going to be the size I want to be. Um, we also talked about weight loss a lot. I told him about my journey and I'm coming up on 50 pounds lost over the span of roughly two years because that was the heaviest I've ever been was two years ago. Um, obviously my journey is a lot smaller time frame than that because I have been more active this past year, the past 12 months. We talked a lot about that and a lot about like making sure, he said, you're at a BMI where I'm, I'm comfortable doing outpatient surgery and the logistics of the medical side of being able to handle a surgery according to BMI and we talked about other doctors who won't even like give me time of day on the phone if my BMI is over a certain number um, he apologized for that because he said part of what he does is he um, does talks and, and conferences over at University of Washington and a lot of the other medical communities in the area um, that it's not always about the number on the chart it's not always about their weight it's not always about <laughs> He said, meet your patients, take the, take the time, do the free consult, find out who they are, find out what they're doing, find out what they're capable of. And he, he said today that he got so many more answers than the answers on my chart about what I'm capable of in terms of, he said some patients, some doctors would say, nope, she's at a weight and a BMI that we're not gonna do this surgery. And he says, but the fact that I, I found out that you've lost almost 50 pounds, that you walk sometimes up to 13 miles at a time. He says, all of these things are telling me you're capable of having this surgery. That the numbers on the chart aren't telling me what I need to know. You're telling me what I need to know. Hang on, let me change the battery. So we talked about all of that and he said, it's up to you if you want to get to a certain weight or a certain time frame. if you wanna set yourself goals. Let's come back here and do a consult in three months and see where you're at see if you hit your goals, see if you're comfortable with that. If you're ready to go now and you're not worried about, he, he said, to be fair, if I were to lose another, I don't know, like 30 to 50 pounds, 
he said that will impact this surgery. He said it could make him kind of shift down again. He said, you know, they may not, um, depending on how you lose that weight. Um, but he said it is something to consider. So maybe getting to a better weight before surgery would be beneficial, but he said it's not necessary as well. He was curious about like the other medications that I'm on for my weight loss. Uh, and he's looked into them a lot because um, he also does like tummy tucks and other um, surgeries and whatnot for weight loss, removal of skin, all that kind of stuff. Was interested in my appointment coming up next week with my endocrinologist and what her thoughts are on um, the new drugs being deemed as the new injections or the old injections being deemed as um, not just for uh, diabetes but also for weight loss and what those possibilities are or what her her thought process is my doctor is am I plateaued at the current levels of medication that I'm on or do we think we can adjust them and have more weight loss so he's he's almost like don't make this decision now to have the surgery go to that appointment at least and like have that conversation with your doctor and and then kind of see what you think in terms of the actual surgery, the type of surgery, to be candid without photos, <laughs> you can look this stuff up online, which I already had done. Um, he is likely going to do the keyhole um, incision, and then that goes down underneath, and it removes tissue from underneath the breast, and it keeps the nipple fully intact and attached to all the nerves in the breast, which then it keeps them all attached to the milk ducts that are in your chest. Um, in order to then shift it up, put it back where the nipple belongs, out instead of down, TMI, but like you clicked on this video, so you clearly want, you understand what we're talking about. Put it up where it belongs, and that's where it, he surprised me. He said, all your tissue that we need, I don't wanna take that out. I don't wanna take it out from the, the lower part of your breast. He said, I just wanna like shift it up where it belongs. And so he's, he actually reduced the portion of price in terms of the reduction, because he's like, I don't need to do a reduction. I don't need to do a very big portion of that. A, a major part of the surgery is the reconstruction of the lift and putting everything back up in place. And for a guy to understand, I don't know, I, it just felt so good in the way he talked, the way he described women's tissues and where the body actually belongs, like where the nipple belongs, where the breast tissue belongs, what happens to the milk ducts after you've been breastfeeding four babies. Like it was just all reassuring that he's really gonna do a good job. Uh, the surgery will likely take, he is estimating it at five to six hours, um, probably about he said two and a half for one side and about um, three or so for the other side. I am disproportionate <laughs> one to the next. They were my feet. I would not deem my breasts any different. <laughs> what else did he say? Um, so he, he gave me a discount on the reduction um, because he don't, I don't need to do a full reduction. He gave a discount on, um, what else did he give me? A discount on the x -Perel. That normally is $500. He is going to include that because he liked my story. And he liked the fact that I'm sharing it with you guys. He liked that I'm being open and vulnerable about it. And he likes that I have been on this journey to lose weight and to feel better about myself. He loved that it's not anything to do with my husband or my husband's image of me, that it's all truly for me. And we talked about how frustrating it is that insurance refuses to see this side of the medical need for women to have this surgery done. It's not just cosmetic. It is not just to put our, our nipples up where they belong so that they look good in a bikini. There's so much more involved in that and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Um, and that's why he was willing to give me some of these discounts because he loved that I'm putting myself out there and willing to help others help you guys with this thought process. Even if you don't end up getting it, being comfortable with yourself, being honest with yourself. And anyway, it is overall, the cost is more than I thought it was going to be. It's about $3,000 more than I thought it would be. With his discount, um, it would have been another $2,500. Nope, another $3,000. So he actually gave me a $3,000 discount. 
which is incredible. So it's more money than I thought it was going to be. So it's a conversation I need to go home and have with Jason. The options of, they, they do not do cash anymore, um, but that's fine. I only use my cash budget to make sure I keep the money and don't spend it. I would just deposit that money and put all the bill onto a credit card and pay the bill off with the said cash that I deposited. Um, and she was like, and girl, you wanna put this on your card so that you earn the points? And I was like, oh honey, you don't know what we do with points. We go to Hawaii with them. So if you think I'm not gonna put this surgery on a credit card to earn points to go to Hawaii after I have a reduction and wear a swimsuit that fits me, way better than it ever has before you got a thing coming and she was like I love clients like you that understand the system like that she's like yes go to Hawaii with new boobs <laughs> she's like work the system put it on the card but she also gave me the option of um, financing it she said there's long-term financing and short-term financing and she said that the short-term financing option it's a 12 month interest free financing and it would that portion of it I would pay whatever portion I could at that time but it would allow us a full 12 months of me being able to pay down on this type of surgery which normally we don't do and this is the part of the conversation I've got to have with Jason because we normally wait until we have the money for something and we pay for it in full and never ever wait and pay and make payments on it like we don't do that with our cars. We even hate that we have a mortgage. <laughs> mortgage is a different different block of finances. But, so this is a new conversation to have. In order to be able to have the surgery sooner, I would possibly do a portion of financing like that, just because it would be free, and I would be able to pay it down over a span of a year at any rate. I mean, obviously I'd make the monthly payment on it, but I could actually like bulk payments. I could add, you know, if I had, extra money from a YouTube channel that month if I had extra money from scans which I actually just got a breast scan today while I was in the office and I had just told him that I I volunteer for the company that makes ultrasound equipment which he thought was fantastic so it's a lot of information it's a lot to regurgitate to Jason I would actually love to be able to like go out to dinner with him tonight and be able to like talk about all this and like figure out what our options are um, we also have to think about it's a very short recovery um, in terms of like the heavy anesthesia and he wants to do a block which is an easier um, anesthetic if you will for pain relief um, and so it's easier to recover afterward so I'm only really talking about a three-day like heavy medical recovery time frame and then it's like a month or two of like oh I'm kind of sore don't touch me but I can walk around I can do life I can function so I also have to consider Abby's surgery and making sure that I'm physically capable and there for her for her surgery depending on when that is so some things play into it other other things I just want to do it. I just want to do it. I want to schedule it. He's about two or three months out on his schedule. So I couldn't do it until fall anyway. So that's the plan. There's no plan yet. But I got so many answers today. And I feel really good about it. And I hope that like by me sharing this journey with you, I know this is the topic that not everyone talks about. Uh, I have a family member who hid her surgery until she told me five years later. I'm not going to do that. I am going to be open and honest that I'm going to have this surgery. My grandma on my dad's side, um, his mom died of breast cancer when she was 90. Didn't end up, you know, treating the breast cancer because she was so old and didn't want to treat it. She was cogni like cognizant of having cancer and just decided to let that be how she passed away. But no one on my maternal side has ever had breast cancer. But that being said, I have very dense tissue. It's always been a concern of ours um, with, you know, Jason and I, that that would probably be the type of cancer that I would get, even though it's not on in any of my genetics on my maternal side. Um, just the genetics of my tissue is more conducive for breast cancer. So this topic is, it's, it's a bigger conversation than just cosmetic surgery. And that's why I'm bringing it to you guys. Get your mammograms. Like I have to get a mammogram scheduled. He's like, you've got to get that scheduled. You had it in March of last year, you know? So it's it's a sensitive topic, but I think, and, and he agreed, the more we talk about it, the more we're okay with it, the more we tell women 
that it is not normal to have your breast tissue in the wrong place especially if after you've had children or if you haven't had children whatever the case is if you've had weight loss or if you've gained weight it is not normal for the body to have the breast tissue in the wrong location so let's fix it and yes there is a cost to it and I am blessed to be able to at least have a third of it covered so far and I've got to work on the cost the rest of the cost um, this is a long chit chatty video and not much to bring but I don't want to go on my the rest of my day and share that part of my day with you because I would really like to have this video as a focus on this topic um, and not bring cheerleading into it if you will <laughs> so if I do film the rest of my day stay tuned and that will be part of another video um, let me know if you have any questions down below if you have come to this video and you're new to my channel my name is Dana if I haven't said that um, a lot of these topic type videos bring new people. I'm married, four kids, four girls. So it is a conversation and he even told me, he's like, you have four girls. Are you telling, talking to them about all this? And I said, yep, this is an open conversation with them. My weight loss is an open conversation with them. They know that I do injections. They know that I am working out. They know that I'm trying to go for walks. I choose myself on Wednesdays and, and other days of the week and make them pick up sisters from work so that I can focus on my exercise and my weight loss. And this will be something that I focus on to have this surgery and have extra money that might go toward Hawaii. I'm gonna take it and be selfish and put it toward myself for this, this one thing that I really need. Um, and they understand that and they're, they're supportive of that. And I think that's important as moms and to teach our daughters that it's okay to choose yourself. <clears throat> it's okay. Um, I wish it was free. I would have chosen it a long time ago, but it's gonna be worth my sacrifice um, to save up for it and make it happen. So if you're on this journey with me, you're helping me make it happen and I appreciate that. Um, I'm gonna take some time to drive home, get some food, and get on with my day. So I will see you guys next time.